Welcome to this segment of Because You Asked, I'm Barry Nussbaum. This week, President Donald Trump released his new and revised immigration travel ban issued again as an executive order. You asked, how is this travel restriction different than the last one that was blocked by the courts? Well, America, there are a number of changes, some major, some minor. I'll do my best to review in order as clearly as possible the differences. Number one, Iraq is now removed from the list. The executive order still imposes a 90-day suspension of entry to the United States for nationals of several mostly Muslim countries. Iraq, however, has been removed from that list. The new list covers six countries. Sudan, Syria, Libya, Somalia, Yemen, and Iran. According to the Trump administration, the Iraqi government has agreed to increase cooperation with the U.S. government with regards to vetting travelers to the United States. Iraq, which is working closely with the U.S. military to defeat ISIS, asked to be excluded from the new list, and they were removed from the order after agreeing to increase cooperation with the U.S. government. According to the fact sheet released by the Trump administration, they're playing by the new rules. Citizens and nationals of Iran, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, and Yemen who didn't have a visa by 5 p.m. on January 27th cannot enter the United States for 90 days. This restriction applies to unaccompanied children as well. Dual nationals from those countries who are traveling on a different passport from a different country aren't affected by the new order. Got all that? <laughs> Number two, valid visas stand. The order clarifies that the foreign nationals from these six countries who already had a valid visa as of January 27th no longer will be affected. Number three, Syria is treated the same and a little different. The new order still calls for a temporary suspension of all refugees from any country while measures are put into place to vet them, but the new order drops language regarding an indefinite suspension of Syrian refugees. They will no longer be singled out, addressing an issue the courts had with targeting of Syrian refugees. According to the revised order, returning refugees are an exception. So the indefinite ban on Syrians is lifted under the new restrictions. They will now be subject to the same 90-day ban for travelers and 120 days for refugees. The original order had read, quote, I hereby proclaim that the entry of nationals of Syrian uh, refugees is detrimental to the interests of the United States, unquote. Under the original ban, Syrians would have been barred until Trump felt that sufficient changes had been made to the screening procedures. By the way, President Obama has allowed 10,000 refugees fleeing Syria's civil war to enter the United States in 2006. And keep in mind, there's virtually no government of Syria, so vetting is virtually impossible. Uh, number four. Green card holders are exempt. The new order makes it clear that legal permanent residents are not affected. The order does not apply to legal permanent residents of the United States, the so-called green card holders. Five, security review. In the first 20 days, DHS will perform a global country-by-country -country review of the identity and security information that each of these six countries provides to support U.S. visa and immigration determinations. These countries then have 50 days to comply with the U.S. request to update or improve the quality of that information prior to issuing a travel visa being rolled out. Number six, now it was done in public. The last time the president signed the document without much media fanfare. This time, the Secretary of State, Rex Tillerson, Secretary of Homeland Security, John Kelly, and Attorney General Jeff Sessions introduced the revised executive order in a media briefing and answered questions. Number seven, effective date. The Trump administration said the new executive order is effective at 12.01 a.m. on March 16th. The new order takes effect in 10 days rather than immediately. Trump's original ban led to chaos at U.S. and international airports as thousands of visa holders were blocked from entering our country or were detained after arriving here. Number eight, religious preferences don't exist anymore. The new ban has no preference for religious minorities such as Christians claiming persecution in mostly Muslim nations. Number eight, 
What about the people who have been granted asylum or refugee status? Well, refugees and people granted by asylum are not covered by the travel order. Refugees and people granted asylum who haven't yet arrived in the United States will be admitted so long as travel was formally scheduled by the State Department. Number nine, are waivers available? Yes. The State Department will consider waivers to visas in conjunction with visa applications. Waivers are granted if the traveler can document that his or her arrival is in the national interest, will not pose a threat to national security, and that denying entry during that suspension period will cause an undue hardship. Number 10. Is Customs and Border Protection coordinating with airlines and about these new restrictions? Yeah. CBP says it will remain in continuous communication with the airlines to provide guidance and answer questions about the new order. Now, keep in mind, airlines routinely check passenger lists before flights against um, flights are approved against the list provided by CBP to ensure that travelers aren't prohibited in the United States. So the reaction, no mass demonstrations this time. Although in some places like Chicago's O'Hare Airport, lawyers are donating their time with set-aside space from the airport authority to counsel illegal immigrants and how not to get deported. One attorney I watched interviewed said he had volunteered because these illegals were having their rights taken away. Really, counselor? My question to him and for you to think about is, what rights? The only rights vested in our country are the rights granted under the Constitution, and those are granted only to American citizens. Please don't let the media confuse you on this point. Being educated makes you a more active participant in our country's democracy. Know the law and know how to apply it. Okay? Really important. Please keep your questions coming to American Truth Project and through our social media on Facebook or Twitter. And if we select your question, you will get a special gift. We're here to answer your urgent questions because you asked. I'm Barry Newsbaum.